Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bone Sleepers Devil Eagle Tour. Starring the four-time entertainer of the year, the Merkable Platinum and Gold, Rick Marcella, Rock and Randall, Hey, William Jr.
here at the ranch on the Idaho-Montana border, uh, probably the place that I love more than anywhere in the world. There's quite a view from right here every morning when you're having your coffee. The Rocky Mountains that separate 
Idaho and Montana. Lots of history, lots of fun out there. Come on, I'll show you. out of uh, my ranch in the big hole in Montana, or one of them, I'm proud to say. Uh, and we're going to look over some of the things that I like to do when I'm not playing a guitar on a stage, and the reasons that I've been coming out here for over 20 years, and probably while I'll end up here. And there's not many folks out here, and there's a lot of hunting and fishing and a lot of gates, and I gotta open one of them right now. show in Butte, Montana, in 1966 or 67, and I was about uh, 17, 18 years old then, and I had a friend in Nashville that told me about this buddy of his up in a place called Big Hole, where they had been hunting and fishing at his ranch, and uh, I uh, came up and saw him, and that time we saw, we drove around, we saw elk, we saw moose, and that's when uh, a teenage Hank Williams Jr. knew that Montana was going to be the place for him. I started uh, buying uh, my first ranch here, which would have been about 1975. I bought the first place, and uh, of course I was nearly killed in the mountain fall up here on the Idaho border on August the 8th of 1975. I went down, according to the U.S. Forest Service, uh, 500 and some odd feet, and uh, I was very lucky to survive that. According to the doctors in Missoula, I shouldn't have survived that. And, uh, a lot of people wonder how I could ever want to come back to a place and look out a window at a mountain that I was never killed on. But, you know, uh, some people like to uh, water ski, and some people like to play tennis, and some people like to sit around the country club and sip martinis, and some people like to uh, hunt and fish and make belt buckles and pistol grips and write songs and. Uh, try to trap a red fox, and I'm one of those people. Hey, Dick. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Folks, this is Dick Willie, man who got me off the mountainside up here in 1975, and Jack Varner. We hunt here a lot there. You know, it's just an old pump well. Uh, there's no electricity, uh, no indoor plumbing <laughs> at all. This is as close to being a mountain man as you can get right here. A little too mountainous sometimes. So we lost the the uh, wood stove. Yeah, we lost. Yeah, the snow. The snow ruined the That's chimney. That's great. We got last in here year. to put all this stuff in last year. Okay, Hank. The problem we have here is uh, last winter with the heavy snowfall. It uh, ruined the chimney. Yep. And uh, kind of created tech with our stove here. So yeah. we're going to have to have a little work done on that, and then yeah. it'll be ready to go. Me and Dick just put this thing in last fall, and we were going to have this very elaborate wood stove, like they had about 1890 around here, to go with the 
the pump outside. <laughs> so that's part, when you start fooling with ranching, that's part of the headaches that have come along. You get it put in, and uh, the snow has wrecked it. We could have been having hot coffee, right? Now. So there's always something to do when you decide you want to be a rancher. time I think it was in 1967 and I was a, a teenager and Dick showed me a moose and an elk and several things that day and you know I was raised by a grandfather in South Alabama and this country we're in right here uh, is black bear moose elk uh, coyote mule deer lynx bobcat wolverine me and Dick found uh, pieces of some rifles from the big old battlefield when the cavalry and the Nez Perce Indians had a battle in 1877 here and retreated right through this area. Uh, it's a thrill for anyone that, you know, that likes out of doors or, or hunting and fishing, and it's definitely uh, got an attraction that, that nowhere else has for me. All right, this is one of the first uh, big game animals that I ever got. I was about uh, 17 or 18 when I killed this. Uh, Big black bear. He's about a 400 pounder. He's a pretty big old boy. All right, here's two more black bears. These are from several years ago. These were uh, taken on the back of the ranch here. Uh, we were having stock problem with these two. So that's why they're on the wall. And that's a shearest moose. And uh, a lot of people don't really realize that, but there's a lot of moose in the Northwest. They're not only in Canada and Alaska. In fact, there's quite a few moose here. They're on a quota system and a drawing system, and if you get lucky enough, you can run into one. And of course, this is a Rocky Mountain elk, the thing that draws so many hunters to Montana or Idaho, and he's, he's just about the king, and he's kind of hard to get. This is a Rocky Mountain billy goat, and of course, I was nearly killed in a mountain fall in 1975, and we were up there uh, photographing these goats. And I think they're one of the most beautiful, majestic animals. They can be on, a, on an outcropping at 8,500, 9,000 feet and the wind blowing their coat and they can just go straight up, straight down. They have all of my respect. And this is uh, the reloading room. This is great therapy for Bocephus. I sit here and uh, we make all our cartridges from little 32s up to big five, 77s, 50 caliber sharps, the old buffalo guns. We sit here and load them all right here and go out here and try them out. Spend a lot of time in here. Mississippi River is going on. Interest is up and the stock market's down. You only get mugged if you go downtown. I live out in the woods, you see. Woman and friends and dogs and me. Got a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive And a country boy can survive Country folks can survive I can go out field all day long Catch catfish from dusk till dawn Make our own whiskey and our own smoke too Ain't too many things these boys and girls can't do we grow big old tomatoes, make a homemade wine, and country boys can survive. Country girls know how to fry. We say, man, if you ain't into that, we don't give a 
down. It came from the West Virginia coal mine, the Rocky Mountains, and the swampy sky. We can skin a buck, run a trot line, and the country boy can survive. Lord, the country folks can survive. Had a good friend in New York City. Never call me bull, she was call me hillbilly. That's right. My grandpa taught me how to live on the land. Mike taught him to be a businessman. He used to send me pictures of the Broadway nights, and I sent him some of Granddaddy Williams and Musky Thine Way. He was killed by a dude with a switchblade knife. Forty-three dollars of my lost in life. I'd like to stick some beach nut in that dude tire. And give him a clip from this forty-five and a country boy down the line. Country girls can get burned. You can't stop a sound. You can't make a run. We're doing a bullet on a shotgun. We say grace. We say, man, you ain't into that, don't give a damn. North California and South Alabama, little bitty towns all over the land. We can skin a buck and run a trot line and a country boy can survive. And I know tourists, baby, I'm your guide for the hug. Country tonight, we'll get you a blonde black bear and a six foot top mountain the lion, and there won't be no squirrel hunting. You know, country boy comes a run. You know, like that kind of life. Country boy can't survive, and I ain't nothing but a dirt road mountain boy. A country boy can't survive. I've been down two or three times. Baby, I'm gonna be your personal hunting guy and sleeping bag and guitar too. And a country boy can survive. How big? Yeah. Well, he's just a two-year-old. He'll weigh about 1,700. He'll mature out at about 2,200. Yeah, he'll go up 22 or more. Get him close to Oh, it can happen. <laughs> it can happen. I just don't when they go myself. around you tw uh, twice as bad. Once is not too bad. Twice is when you look bad. You're beating the air. <laughs> Falling in love with uh, the Northwest and Montana is the same reason that many other people from many other uh, fields, not only the entertainment business, to get away and be more or less undiscovered. They want to get an old pickup and a pair of jeans and a shirt 
and say, I'm going to enjoy my life. And it's very simple. That, that's, that's all it is. I don't think I would be very productive riding a bus or an airplane for X amount of days because uh, I keep those quality times open. Now I can. I couldn't do it through my 20s and, and real early 30s. It's just work, 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 work. You know, honky tonks, nightclubs, openings, uh, civic centers finally. Uh, and when there's something to look forward to, it, it, it can really change things up. Put some Jim Beam in that 
rock and roll band. Oh, you know I love to hear your guitar sound. Play on the lawns like a cry. Play country boy cans of mine. And finish the night off. See us please with whiskey then and hell Play your cheap eating heart Play all you and your daddy's part And then play whiskey then for us Yeah, old Hank songs, they always make me feel Well, over the years, the biggest misconception uh, about me naturally was the, uh, since I had some affiliation with some people in the rock and roll world, you know, because I like to play a lot of instruments. Oh, he's a he's the wildest party man in the world, man. He drinks tons of whiskey and does all this wild stuff, you know. Uh, and then after, as the years went by, I mean, people finally realized, you know, I was 25 and then I was 35, you know, and you know, and I'm 39 now. Uh, after so long, they, they just realize that's just not the way it is, and especially people that really know me. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, the elk count this year, the uh, duck population in the Mississippi Flyway, the water temperature on Kentucky Lake. You start spending time with me and hanging around, and, uh, uh, you know, it might burst a lot of bubbles for a lot of people, but... They find out that the stage and the show and and the other Hank is is, is two different things. Two total although the songs, you know, that I sing about, uh, you can easily understand, you know, there's a lot of things about outdoor life. Um uh, and there's a lot of things about uh, fishing and hunting and you know, we had whiskey bent and hell bound and you know, that song was twelve years ago. Uh, and I think that over the years, and, uh, you know, a lot of them were, they, I mean, even the awards people at that time, I think they were scared to death of me. And I've had some of the uh, other acts tell me that. And some of the other big country acts, they're scared to ever come over the bus or, or say anything. And uh, I, I think all of that's pretty well uh, cleared out ever since uh, about 1985. It still amazes me. The people from the rock field or the pop field, uh, from the movie industry, that I find out are big Hank fans, you know, and uh, Merle or someone in the office say, "Man, you know this, this actor, this baseball player, this football player, this actress." Uh, it, it's pretty amazing to me, and and they're they're people from all walks of life. Uh, uh, the President of the United States right now, George Bush, and they, they said, God, they want you to at the inauguration. Could you sign this to him? You know, this stuff is, this is all dreamland stuff. Uh, and as far as, as achievements just in life, uh, to me, it's a big achievement to uh, learn to live with all of it. There's a lot of, a lot of the folks in the music business that do a lot of great things musically, but I don't think they achieve in, uh, the, some of the happiness they're looking for. And You know, I do a lot of fishing and I do a lot of hunting and it makes me write a lot of songs and, and do a lot of shows. And you've got to find, you, you've got to find your own balance. Uh, and that's always meant a lot to me because it's a big achievement to me to go up here on the top of this mountain and, and, and uh, find some old artifacts uh, from mining days or get that 
bull elk I've been looking at for four or five years chasing around. Those are real big to me, too. And uh, the older you get, the bigger those are and the less the others are. No one to talk with. I'm all by myself. No one to walk with. Lord, I'm happy on a shelf. Ain't misbehaving. Save love and for you. You don't want to love I'm through it flirting Yeah, you I'm dreaming of all Ain't misbehaving Saving my love for you Just like Jack Horn In the corn future uh, on my albums and in my music uh, the way it's been for several years you know there's uh, there's a lot of country there's a lot of rock and roll there's a lot of blues there's a lot of uh, gospel uh, we've had a few old jazz things like ain't misbehaving and uh, I think that's what keeps the interest uh, not only for other people, but for me, for the producer of that music, uh, to not be, I don't like to be in a, in a rut uh, musically. And I could have as much fun making uh, an album that was, uh, oh, a tribute to, to blues or a tribute to rock or a tribute to jazz. Uh, uh, so I, that keeps me flexible because I like all kinds of it. Uh, and uh, I like uh, to play my banjo as much as I like to play a real, you know, hot electric guitar. So, you know, it's hard for me to say in the future. We do have a lot of projects, though, and we've had certain ideas that have been put on the back burner for one year and then two years and then three years because we've had uh, some good things happen musically. So I'm, I'm not used up yet we've still got some projects to to think about and that keeps it fun what are you excited about next what's coming up next that's in the future that you can 
Well, uh, naturally, a tear in my beer with Daddy was one of the most exciting things we ever did, finding an original Hank Williams song like that. Uh, we've had a, a uh, blues album concept, and we're talking about the old blues men of the 20s and 30s and 40s uh, with dobros and, and, and acoustic guitars and a lot of famous folks to uh, play on the album with us, and we might all use different names. Uh, and we, we've really thought about that one a lot, and I, I think that's the main one that everybody's thinking about right now is this uh, true uh, southern delta riverbank type uh, pure blues album. Very few instruments, and uh, I think that that's the main thing that we're thinking about next. Take care of each other and I take 
raised in a small town called Shreveport, Louisiana, which grew a little bit larger today. But then it had one unique feature. It was a haven for country music singers. They called them hillbillies back then. And they poured in all over the country because they were trying to make Shreveport another grand old opera like they had in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, the year was 1948, and I was 14 years old. There was a guy from Alabama that had been making some noise, and we'd heard some talk about how good he was and how he was... Uh, guy that could be the next star of country music. I was working for a group called the Bales Brothers. They were from Nashville, and they were helped making the Louisiana Hayride the cradle of stars. So when this guy came in from Alabama, an old beat-up Chrysler, one of those town cars, you know, with a wood kind of uh, ra uh, ragged on the side, and the, well, I, I heard the car before I saw it, smoke pouring out, and it stopped in front of the radio station about 6.30 in the morning. And I ran across the street with my buddy, and I said, hey, can I carry your guitar? And he said, well, uh, I said, the elevators don't work till 7 o'clock, and you're on in just a few moments. He said, oh, really? And so my buddy reached for the guitar, and I reached for the guitar. We started fighting over it, and he looked at me, he says, grab it, Hoss. And I've been carrying Hank Williams' guitar ever since. And about that time, uh, his wife came out of the car, and she was pregnant. I mean, man, she was pregnant. 
And I have never seen a woman that big. Sure enough, they had a little boy. That boy weighed 12 pounds, five ounces, and his name was Bo Seepers, Hank Williams, Jr. So when he was about 14, I told his mother, I said, honey, he is ready to go on the road with a band. I mean, the bus, the big deal, the record contract. She says, I really want him to finish school. I think I'll wait till he's 18. I said, let me tell you something. This guy is ready, because Hank, you know, is six foot, over six foot one, six two, good looking guy. The girls are crazy about him. I said, this is the time to go. So when they got the bus and the band ready, and he, she says, I think you should come along with us and do some shows. So uh, that was uh, May 1st, 1964. And I've been with Hank's opening act for 21 years. And April 6, 86, Hank looked at me one day on our plane and he says, brother, we're moving from Alabama. We're going back to Tennessee and you're going to be the manager. We have the Hank Jr. fans delight. We have Hank Jr. t-shirts, caps. We have jackets, jerseys, you name it. We have it. Now, these are the items that we send out all over the world. We also have Hank's Collectibles, a museum located next to our retail store, Collider Corners. On display are cars and trucks of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. have displayed is uh, the award that everybody in country music lives and dreams of one day walking up on the stage and getting and that's the entertainer of the year award what do you want right there in the middle that part, yeah, the burnt part. Oh, outside me. Yeah, that part. That's my favorite. Flowers. That's, how long did you say? Thank you. Oh. Feeds you like Caesar. No. Oh. Spaghetti. No, I said. it rains, the true outdoorsman head for the cabin. <laughs> 50 Mercury came from Long Island, New York, from a very rich estate that kept it like new and it's in the car collection here and I thought it was kind of like me here on my birthday today it's kind of you know got a little character to it not the prettiest car in the world not the ugliest car in the world and it runs like a top I've never wanted to be a manager but now that I got the job I love it and I should have been doing this all the time because it's natural for me I know the product I know the product better than I believe anybody on this earth. I know Hank's limitations. Uh, I know what he can do. And I know things that he won't do. I remember when he was 14 and 15, and after every show, we'd sign autographs by the bus. That was a tradition that was done then. And people would come up and say, sign this, little Bo Sivas. And Hank said, yes, sir, I sure will. Okay. Well, you did a pretty good job. He said, uh, you're good, but you ain't good as your daddy. And that would be hard for anybody to overcome, but he did it. So you got to take your old hat off to him because uh, he has become the biggest artist in country music ever, Bo Cephas. fear at all I, uh, you know I'm, I've been used to playing in front of people all my life and uh, you know if there's five fifteen thousand out there uh, that's to me that's almost natural you know uh, my fear is the technical end that the amplifier will quit or the guitar is out of tune but the other is 
just like a guy getting up and, and going down to a hardware store and opening the door. It's the same thing to me when I walk out on that stage. Just like just like opening the door, walking in. It's very, uh, very natural to me. But it should be after 30 years. <laughs> Oh yeah, I enjoy it, but I also I keep it to a point where I will enjoy it. I don't do 200 shows a year anymore. I do less shows every year, and uh, you, you know you just got You got to keep that fire there. You got to if they if you let them book you uh, 29 one nighters in 40 days, you're not gonna enjoy it, and I don't do that because I remember those times. <laughs> yeah, country music singer.
Stealing the show. Money to burn. Girls are pretty to take. As long as I'm a born to fuck it. Oh, it is. 
he stuck his hand down. Son, and we got a deal for you. We're going to do you things without the making movies. I told you, my mama just ready to go fool. I'll take your money. I'll make a movie. I can tell you right now, I was trained to fuck it.
Becomes a legend himself. The superstar. 